coming up tonight. Pioneer regional executive members of Cameroon's 10 regions have taken office with clarion calls on them to be at the service of civilians. Right ahead, we take the polls of the regions. Cameroon joins Central African states in integrating the anti-COVID-19 vaccine as a solution to roll back the pandemic. Morocco has played a goalless draw against Rwanda in Douala this evening. The second group C match to start in 30 minutes pits Togo against Uganda. The details right now. Thanks for watching the 730 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinzuka in Yaoundé. Despite our efforts, COVID-19 plunged many families into mourning and seriously hampered the functioning of our economy and society. The Japanese government has expressed her interest to help Cameroon in the process of rebuilding the southwest region that is affected by socio-economic crisis. The Japanese ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Osawa Tsumtomo, broke the news during an audience with Prime Minister Joseph John Gute. The diplomat said his country is ready to rehabilitate health centers, water points and schools. Details with Christian Chiatam. Concerning the reconstruction of the southwest region, the Japanese are considering three projects. First, the rehabilitation of health centers and water points in the region, and the construction of buildings for two primary schools in Limbe and Tiko. Today we had an excellent uh, discussion on the cooperation uh, between Japan and Cameroon, um, especially uh, the project in southwest region. Uh, Japan attached a great importance in the cooperation uh, with Cameroon. The Japanese diplomat also revealed that his country is considering two other projects of general interest. The first is the suspension of debt repayment within the framework of the G20 Debt Service Suspension Initiative and a project to improve the TV production equipment of Cameroon Radio Television Corporation. Both men also talked about the Tokyo Summer Olympic Games in 2021, the Osaka Kansai World Exposition, and the TICAD 8 meeting in 2022. Friday's audience is an indication that the long-standing bilateral ties between Cameroon and Japan remain as strong and as fertile as ever. A sub-regional plan that integrates the anti-COVID vaccine to roll back the pandemic has been examined at the 36th session of the conference of SEMAC Health Ministers. Cameroon's Health Minister and Acting President of the meeting, Manauda Malashi, today chaired a video conference in the presence of WH officials. Beatrice Goom reports. United under the SEMAC anthem, they have waged a fight against COVID-19 since the outbreak of the pandemic. United again, they say they can push through with the immunization plan, a sub-regional plan on COVID response in Semak Africa that was given pride of place on the table of discussions at this video conference organized by health ministers of the Semak and their WHO partners to exchange on the stand of member countries with regards to the orientations on the fight against COVID-19. We agree to work with scientific committee to learn more about the different type of vaccine. We think that in the next week we can talk to the population exactly which kind of vaccine we can use to fight against COVID-19 in our sub-region. Member countries were called to support actions that promote the well-being of citizens in the sub-region by engaging in ongoing negotiations to acquire the vaccine in bulk from certified labs, but equally to invest in research. 
The Minister of Territorial Administration has ended a close to one week working visit to the North, West, and West regions. During the visit, Paula Tanganji made an evaluation of the security situation and held a meeting with traditional rulers of the West. Ebenezer Kanga was part of Minister Paul Atanganji's delegation. His report. It was a church visit for the Minister of Territorial Administration in the Northwest and West regions. In Bamenda and Bafusam, Paul Atanganji presided over security evaluation meetings for the two regions. It's my pleasure to tell all of you that President Paul Bia has won the war against the secessionists and the terrorists. At a ceremony on the esplanade of the Northwest Governor's Office, the minister handed five guns laid down by separatist fighters to the Gendarmerie Legion commander. We will take the ex-combatants to the DDR center where they will now live a new life because the message is very clear. Either they lay down the weapons as this is a very good example or they will be disarmed. Paul Atanganji also handed relief items to 400 households of internally displaced persons in Bameda and ended the visit in Bafusam, where he held a meeting with traditional rulers of the West region to call some of them with anti-Republican behavior to order. Africa, yelele, Africa, yelele. Morocco have played a goalless draw against Rwanda in the two action in Group C at the Douala Unification Stadium today. At 8 p.m., Uganda will confront Togo. Snossel Ano Ebie now joins us live from Douala with updates and stakes of the second match. Good evening, Snossel Ano Ebie. Go, Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, This meeting of reporters, no, say, no, say, eh, yeah. Good evening, Moki Edwin Kinzika, and welcome to the inner bowl of the Douala Unification Stadium, where the situation in Pool C remains undecided following the goalless draw in the first encounter between the Atlas Lounge of Morocco and Rwanda. Morocco is still topping the pool with four points, followed by Rwanda with two points. Right now, we are preparing and getting set for the second encounter between Uganda and Togo. The two teams have come out for their warm-up session, which for the match that will begin at exactly 8 p.m. The stakes of that encounter, of course, remain the fact that both Rwanda and both Uganda and Togo, I beg your pardon, are nowhere placed in the competition. Uganda has one point this far, and a defeat for Uganda would mean an early exit for the competition, while for Togo is a similar situation. They have just no point this far, and a defeat would mean an early exit for the competition. We are not there yet. The thousands of spectators who have come out here tonight, respecting the 25% quarter, recommended by CAF, are eager to watch beautiful soccer made in Africa. Snow cell Anoe Bia on special assignment in Dwala Bepanda for the 730 News. Back to you, Moki Edun Kinzika. Thanks very much, Snow cell Anoe Bia. Uganda and Togo will, in a, about less than 30 minutes, clash at the Bepanda Unification Stadium for the second group C game of the day. And as you heard, Snow cell Anoe Bia reports the... Uh, Title holders Morocco played a zero all tie with Rwanda. Let's come back with highlights of that encounter with Cyril Nwazeke. The first 45 minutes of the clash between the Atlas Lions of Morocco and the Yamavubis of Rwanda have the two teams show a mastery of the game. The much expected spectacle wasn't at the rendezvous. The Moroccans met a stiff Rwandan team. The few incursions from the Atlas Lions, like that of the 17 minutes by Buftini, were fruitless. The Yamavubis retaliated with the set piece by AS Kigali player Hakizamana in the 34th minute that met the Moroccan keeper. 
goalkeeper's Niti. Both teams went on resales on a 0-0 tie. In the second half, title holders Morocco, with much pressure on their shoulders, started firing from all cylinders. Raimi's early second segment attempt met keeper Quizeri on top form. Morocco went on to waste a glaring opportunity in the 56th minute. The last minutes of the game were quite intense as Rwanda fought to maintain the goalless draw. Morocco and Rwanda, after the 0 0 tie, will have to negotiate their quarterfinal tickets during the three. CRTV staff producing international signals for the ongoing African Nations Championship at the Bepanda Omispo Stadium have been told to make the coverage unique. The project manager of 2020 Chan at CRTV, Wangi Bay Emmanuel, also Deputy Director General of the Corporation, visited the staff today. Baldwin Sama reports from Douala. He continues his regular visits to the different competition sites as CRTV's Deputy Director General Emmanuel Wongibe came to the reunification stadium to encourage CRTV staff working here to continue living up to expectations throughout the competition. During a brief working session at the reunification stadium, Emmanuel Wongibe called for discipline, hard work and assiduity to prevail while reminding them of the necessity to maintain a clean sheet at the end of the coverage. You must be in project mode. You are not doing things as you always do. We, you are going to run through many more unexpected incidents than you have seen now. Each time you have to adapt, each time you have to say, how do I do it well and do it as quickly as possible? After the first matches produced here, CRTV staff are quite motivated and poised to maintain the flag very high as every detail has been taken into consideration for a hit free and successful coverage. The pioneer president of the Regional Council for the Center has been called upon to invest his wealth of experience to the new structure and propel development. The call was made today in Yaoundé by the governor of the Center Region, Nasri Paul Beya, while commissioning Jiben Timevuna into his duties. Details with Ebenezer Akanga. After his election and swearing in, Gilbert Chimevuna has been commissioned into his duties as pioneer president of the regional council for the center. He was commissioned alongside members of the executive bureau of the regional council by the governor of the center region, Nasri Paul Bear. The governor called on the pioneer president of the regional council to use his wealth of experience to give content to the new structure and prepare the development of the center region. They have to be sure that the development is harmonious throughout the whole region without any exception. The governor stated that there will be no conflict of competence between the president of the regional council and the representative of the state because the law clearly defines their rules. Gilbert Chimevuna is 76 years and father of four. His installation ceremony was a veritable crowd puller that brought together personalities from all walks of life and a huge number of supporters of the CPD. The pioneer president of the Northwest Regional Assembly, Professor Fruan Guafo III, has pledged to use love, compassion, and empathy to quest to bring back peace in the Northwest region ruined by separatist crises. He took the commitment alongside seven other bureau members during an installation ceremony chaired by Northwest Governor Adolf Lili Lafrik. Eric Langmer Wufo reports from Bamenda. They shall henceforth manage the affairs of the Northwest region within the context of the putting in place of the decentralization process and a spacious status. The president and members of the executive bureau are counting on the efforts of the population to form a collective pact intended to bring back peace to the Northwest region. That can only happen when we have meetings in Jangi group, family associations, Looking, working with the natural structure of our families and our communities to begin to grow love, compassion, and empathy. I pledge my total availability and my readiness to work with all class of people. 
of the society to bring peace. The governor of the Northwest region has instructed the eight members of the executive bureau to reinstall the confidence of the population, insisting that there can be no meaningful development without lasting peace that is needed to kickstart government's reconstruction efforts of the embattled Northwest region. The Pioneer Executive Bureau of the Southwest Regional Assembly has been commissioned with a reminder that the population is counting on them to bring meaningful development. Southwest Governor Benao Kale Bilai was speaking at the Boya Independence Square during a colorful installation of the eight-man Executive Bureau members led by Bakuma Elango Zakeos. Enanga Menyole reports from Boya. The eight man Pioneer Executive Bureau of the Southwest Regional Council is made up of a president, a vice president, three commissioners, two secretaries, and one questor. In his installation speech, the representative of the state, Southwest Governor Bernardo Kaliabilai, reminded the new team of their daunting task. We have roads, we have the educational system to, to, to address ourselves to, we have the health facilities. We'll be examined. While calling on the population to count on them, the vice president underscored the fact that the time for serious business is now. My first activity will be to convene the colleagues of the House of Chiefs so that we now can make a pathway. Traditional dances grace the ceremony attended, among others, by some government ministers, senators, members of the National Assembly, and a host of top dignitaries in the southwest region. The Executive Bureau of the Littoral Regional Council has taken up activity and members of the Bureau led by Banlock Policab were officially commissioned by Littoral Governor Samuel Jedone Evaha Dibua. Veronica Benyela reports from Douala. From elections through oath-taking to installation, the steps to go into active duty for decentralized entities is now completed. We have to start all the point. We are going to see about the roads, about electricity, about water supply, about health, and about education. I'm the only woman uh, which is, uh, who is at this post in the country. I will try to bring something in a sort of way that the population is uh, happier. While addressing the crowd that turned out to witness this historic moment in the littoral, Governor Samuel Diodone Iva Adiboa took time to clearly spell out the place of the regional council and that of executive administration that he heads. In reality, he explains, the law defines their various duties and makes them parallel and complementary. He then exhorted the Pioneer Executive Bureau to work hard and prove that decentralization is actually the catalyst of local development in Cameroon. Emmanuel Mvele Lemva has officially taken office as president of the South Regional Council. The governor of the South Region, Felix Ngelengele, urged the regional executive to work in collaboration with public authorities for the, for the development of that region. Benis Atabong reports. Thousands of inhabitants of the South have celebrated the Pioneer Executive of the South Regional Council. The first ever president of the council, Emmanuel Mve Elemva, and his collaborators, who were installed by the governor of the South Region, have been called upon to transform the region. The Maiden Regional Council will be in charge of managing the socio-economic and cultural affairs of the South. We are very engaged to to satisfy the need of all our population. The people of the region are delighted with the new regional council. We say good luck for the, the new team. The former Indomitable Lions captain Emmanuel Mve Elemva and the six other members of the executive have received their insignias. They now have the task to better the living conditions of the people of the South, a region with major projects which shares borders with three neighboring countries. Muhammadu Dewa has been entrusted with powers to head the Adamawa Regional Council. Governor Kildadi Tageke Buka challenged the Biru to ensure a harmonious development of the region. Rakiatu Musa Jinge reports from Gaundere. 
Hundreds of Adamawa inhabitants witnessed historic events where the Panier president of the Adamawa Regional Council takes office in Gaundari. Dr. Muhammad Dewa promised to be loyal, render fairness with enthusiasm as he takes firm commitments on this day alongside members of his bureau. While commissioning them into their functions, Adamawa Governor Keith Daddy Tageke Bukar urged the team to bury any political hatchets and work for the development of the region. As the representative of the state, we are going to do everything possible to accompany him, to enlighten him, and to guide him. For five years, Dr. Muhammad, the former vice president of the Chamber of Agriculture, a member of the Central Committee of the NUDP party and his team, will spur socioeconomic development of the region. The 61-year-old president has promised to collectively work with the administrative and local officials to meet the needs of the people. In the far north region, the first ever regional executive bureau was told to intensify efforts to reconstruct infrastructure destroyed by Boko Haram terrorists. Far north Governor Miji Yawa Bakari spoke during a ceremony to commission regional council president Kalbasu Daniel. Henry Tato Ikambi reports from Marwa. Their task is huge and their expectations from them high. The Far North Regional Council will have to handle the conflict between elephants and humans, a high illiteracy rate, biting poverty, poor roads, an economy punctured by Boko Haram sect, amongst other challenges. It will be involved in the development. And the 69-year-old economist Kabasu, who shoulders a sizable chunk of the responsibility, says the Regional Council's priority project revolves around basic amenities. The main priority is uh, the road, the second point energy, and the third point is the employment for youth. The massive crowd that turned out as a way of saying we are representing the more than 4 million residents in the region are praying the Far North Regional Council stands as that efficient midwife to ensure the successful delivery of their pregnancies of expectations. The administrative courts of the center region has thrown out an appeal for the cancellation of regional elections in some parts of the center region. The petitions were submitted by traditional rulers of Brikiteri in Yaoundé and the Nyongan Sud Division. Sidonin Jogmandi has the rest of that story. The administrative court of the center region has today pronounced its verdict, and the two petitions submitted by traditional rulers of Ekudu in the Briketeri neighborhood and in the Nyong and So division for the regional council elections were thrown away. The files were declared unfounded and dismissed by the examining judge of the administrative court of the center region. The traditional rulers who are requesting the annulment of the election based their argument on the disqualification of candidate list in the could do by the Ministry of Territorial Administration as well as misconduct of elections in the Nyong and So Division. Members of ELECAM and some lawyers have argued against accusations made and have generally agreed with the reports of the examining judge for the petitions to be thrown away. Meanwhile, petitioners who submitted files for the regional council elections are unanimous that the verdict made by the administrative courts of the centre region have to be respected. I urge you once again to put on your face masks, to wash your hands regularly, and to consult a physician or any other health personnel if you notice any symptoms. This is the only way to save lives and to curb the spread of the virus. Many health professionals have been deployed to the different pitches of the African Nations Championship to ensure that anti-COVID-19 barrier measures are strictly respected. Baldwin Sama and his guest Leonard Ewane are standing by at the Bipanda Stadium in Douala to tell us how the health workers can be identified by civilians in need. Good evening, Baldwin Sama. 
Good evening to you. They work very closely with the different delegations ever since they got to Cameroon for the ongoing African Nations Championship. We are talking about these health uh, professionals. Uh, how can they be easily identified? We find out from uh, a field epidemiologist who is a guest tonight, uh, Leonard Ewane. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Sama. How can one easily identify these health professionals who are assigned to work with the different teams at the Japoma Stadium and the Bipanda Municipal Stadium here in Douala? Yeah, Mr. Sama, uh, it's worth mentioning that this competition uh, requires the implication of so many actors. And so many actors take part in activities that govern this competition. And these actors, apart from the health teams, we also have security men. We have people who provide first aids. We also have these guys who have no profession, maybe who pick the balls. Those guys who are around the stadium, when the ball is out of the pitch, they go and pick up the ball. So you see that they are, they are men of the media. There are so many people involved in this competition. And all of these actors are supposed to be get accredited at the level of the CAF. And this accreditation center was, has been set up at the level of Bonanjo. So everybody who is taking part in the competition was supposed to get accredited. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Ewane. Uh, Leonard, for all those explanations, those are some of the ways through which you can get to identify most of these health professionals working with the different teams in Japoma and Bipanda here in the nation's economic capital, Duwala. Back to you. Thanks, thanks very much, uh, Bodin Sama, and we hope to be having more details from you in Douala as we go along covering the uh, African Nations Championship. Now, the southwest region is host to many tourists, and their sites, including historic structures, sandy beaches, and a host of natural features, visitors taking part at this year's African Nations Championship have a variety that they should go visiting when they have time and if they want. Hombo Suzy Monjoa reports on the touristic beauty of or the tourism beauty of the Southwest region. Of the highest mountain in the country, as well as in Central and West Africa, its beauty, the admiration of every visitor. Just at the foot of Mount Fako stands the monument of the 50th anniversaries of Cameroon's independence and reunification. Driving into Limbe, the many visitors who flock the town cannot help but notice the gigantic Atlantic Ocean with its black sandy beaches. The Limbe Down Beach is one of the many sites of attraction along the sides of the coast, also known for its friendship to the several visitors. The historic Bimbia Slave Trade Village is also another interesting site in the town that is hosting matches of the Shan. Natural features like Lake Barombi in Meme, the Monenguba Twin Lakes, and the famous Hanging Bridge built by the Germans in Manu Division are equally some of the most visited tourist destinations in the region. It is with that we come to the end of the 730 News on CRTV. The next news is coming up in exactly 30 minutes with Atta Badino Ma. I am Moki Edwin Kinzika and Yaoundi. Thank you for watching. personally observed that most of our fellow citizens no longer comply with the protective measures prescribed by the government.
Si Artivi News.